Yeah, hi there everybody at YouTube, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of the lessons at the 7-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT today. I'm actually listening to some of my students' uh, either pronunciation or speaking practice tests. If anybody at YouTube is interested in joining my online TOEFL course, you can go to onlinetoeflcourse.com to find more about it, and guess what? I will give you exactly the same feedback that you see in these videos. My job is to help my, my TOEFL students improve their academic English, including pronunciation and speaking, as you will see in this video. Okay, I'm going to go to my first student, uh, Brian. He's doing a lot of pronunciation practice right now, and for good reason. Because if you have good delivery, many good things will happen on your speaking section of your TOEFL. All right, hi Brian, this is Michael, and I'm getting ready to listen to your pronunciation practice here over the last um, uh, 24 hours here, so let's go to your first one. To solve those community problems. After this man, otherwise three thirds of the religious leaders. Okay, now let me go ahead and find this. Um, I need to find which one you're practicing right now, and then I'm going to comment on it. I got it. So you're practicing the interdental consonant, that TH sound, correct? And I'm going to give you some feedback on that. Okay, here we go. Thirsty Orthodox religious leaders. You want to say thirsty? You're not quite putting that S in there. Thirst, thirsty Orthodox. We we'll conduct a thorough meeting to solve those community problems. Now that one word, those, you need to make that a little bit longer. Those, those community problems. After these men decided then to go past the college, thereby missing their third period class. They theorize that the thing of how coming should be military couples of the past. Not bad. So let me read that one more time with you. So after these men decided thence to go past the college, thereby missing their third period class, they theorized that the theme of homecoming should be military couples of the past. The thyroid ground can cause thyself to become fat and surely thereafter causing heart diseases. And say that word heart. Heart disease. And that's singular, not diseases, but heart disease. Anthony was threatened by anthrax, which was brought into his farm by a mother moth. And then say that word farm, was brought into his farm by mother moth. I would rather either the ether or the crowd be used as the worthy cleaning agent worth more than its waste in feathery feathers. You got it. I think you're doing the voice. The benefit of exercising is that increases bone mass. It's important to keep healthy and strong bones because they provide movement and protect our internal organs. Osteoporosis is the loss of bone mass and strength. Can we go back to that beginning there one more time? Okay, here we go. Another benefit of exercising is that increases bone mass. A little trouble with your pausing. I would say it like this. Another benefit of exercising is that it increases bone mass. So you want to pause after the verb and then put the noun clause directly after that. It's important to keep healthy and strong bones because they provide movement and protect our internal organs. Okay. Osteoporosis is the loss of bone mass and strength, which increases the risk of bone fractures. You want to say risk. The risk of bone fractures. Risk. This is most common. And try that word. Not this, but this is most common in elderly women. So this, this. Try these two words. Write these down for a minute, Brian. Okay. Uh, let me put them up here for you too. 
can you see these two words? You, you have this, these. This, these. How about pit, peat. Hit, heat. So, this. This is most common. In other women. Research has shown that regular exercise... No, pausing. Be careful. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you with this. I help you with everything, right? So when you say the word shown and you're introducing the noun clause, you need to say it like this. Research has shown that regular exercise increases bone mass and strength and prevents bone loss in the elderly and is used to treat osteoporotic patients. So whenever you're introducing a dependent clause, you typically will pause right before that dependent clause. It increases bone mass and strength and prevents bone loss in the elderly and is used to treat osteoporotic patients. Say so that word treat is used to treat osteoporotic patients. So I think this one, keep practicing this one. Now in addition to the pronunciation, part of my goal also with your practice is to help you with your pacing to make sure that you're speaking naturally, you're speaking quickly, and you're pacing or pausing in all the right areas. So if I read this paragraph I would say this. Another benefit of exercising is that it increases bone mass. It is important to keep healthy and strong bones because they provide movement and protect our internal organs. Osteoporosis is the loss of bone mass and strength which increases the risk of bone fractures. This is most common in elderly women. Research has shown that regular exercise increases bone mass and strength and prevents bone loss in the elderly and is used to treat osteoporotic patients. And here we go with the last one, the next one. The pain can be a shooting pain, a burning pain, or even an extremely piercing pain. A pain capsule is a container that is filled with... Yes, you're getting a little bit better with that P. It, it was a little bit unnatural the first time, but you're definitely pronouncing it with more air. Okay, so let me, let me find this exercise just quickly. Give me a second. I'm going to look for the keyword piercing. I got it. Here it is. And then you say... The pain can be a shooting pain, a burning pain, or even an extremely piercing pain. Good. So it's sounding more natural, but you're still paying attention to the bilabial consonant, the P. Piercing pain. A tank capsule is a container that is filled with objects that show important things about the way people live in a certain time and place. Okay, good. Not this bad. has already been made by incorporating genetic material into bacteria, the cultures of which have become synthesizers of insulin. Good. Laboratory I'm going to say not E, but in Insulin. Insulin. Researchers in Europe demonstrated that Greek parrots could learn but pause after demonstrated because you're introducing the noun clause. So you'll say it like this. You'll say, laboratory researchers in Europe demonstrated that gray parrots could learn the kinds of symbolic and conceptual tasks that are generally considered as pre or co requisites for language. The kinds of symbolic and conceptual tasks that are generally considered as pre or co requisites for complex cognitive and communicative skills. Good. The player bugs can move side to side and backboard, similar to a spider, instead of taking off in play from the ground, this bug actually launch themselves into the air with powerful pectoral muscles. Good. Powerful. I liked how you did that. That actually sounded natural. Powerful pectoral muscles. So very good on this exercise. So very nicely done.
Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Meg Delmeda, and I am Michael, the founder owner and the materials writer for all of your lessons. And I'm going to listen to your independent speaking practice test number 88. When I'm going to get married, I prefer to have a short engagement that lasts less than six months. First of all, short engagements not create a design for the couples. For instance, if my friend Maria spent two years in an engagement before she got married because her husband wanted to raise enough money for the wedding. However, she got seriously stressed because of anxiety she developed during the long wedding preparation time. Moreover, I believe couples cannot wait to live together after engagement. For instance, after long five year dating, my husband and I had the only two month engagement because we couldn't wait to live together in our dream house. Therefore, we said only a very simple wedding each month, which is why it is away. Okay, let's take a look at this question just briefly here. So, do you prefer a longer engagement, one that lasts one to two years, or do you prefer a shorter engagement, right? Okay, let me listen to it one more time. I already listened to it once, but this will um, uh, help me. Okay, here we go. When I'm going to get married, I prefer to have a short engagement that lasts less than six months. First of all, short engagements not create an anxiety for the couples. For instance... So it... what? So it doesn't create anxiety? When I'm going to get married, I prefer to have a short engagement... Let's say the word married. No, it's married. Married. When I get married, or when couples get married... ...that lasts less than six months. First of all, short engagements not create anxiety for the couples. For instance... So, shorter... I would say shorter engagements create less anxiety for the couples. You might say it like that. My friend Maria spent two years in an engagement before she got married because her husband wanted to raise enough money for the wedding. However, she got seriously stressed because of anxiety she developed during the long wedding preparation time. Okay. Moreover, I believe couples cannot wait to live together after engagement. For instance, after long five year dating, my husband and I had the only two month engagement because we couldn't wait to live together in our dream house. Okay. Therefore, we said only a very simple wedding each month, which is why it was away. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this one. So, I think overall you, some minor language use issues, I think. Uh, overall, you had fairly good topic development along with appropriate supporting details. You had some minor delivery issues, for example, the word married, married. So, in this one, uh, I'm going to put you to about 3.0 out of 4, 23 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. All right, thank you. Check my email while I upload that speaking file. Go to the next one. Now we got a pretest.
let's go to the pronunciation section of my course. And the purpose here, Agnes just completed a pretest for vowel and consonant sounds. And I'm going to see which areas she needs to focus on more in my course in order to speak more clearly. It's as simple as that. Okay, here we go. Pot, boat, wrong, grow, honor, over, father, though. Pat, pot, map, map, tech, talk, and on, mac, mock. Bright, brown, broil, lie, loud, oil, pie, pound. Gate, get, late, let, mate. So far, no met. problems. Blade, bled, dane, den. Neat, mit, pit, pit, lip. Lip, sit, sit. She can hit, work on lesson eleven a little bit. Look, look, luck, took, took, tough, could, pull, match, mash, chip, sheep, feature, fisher, um, shift. Shaft, cheer, shear. Off, off, half, have, fine, vine, fen, then. Woofer, waver. How? We work on the G a little bit. Who, rehash, behavior, hate, Batman, bitten. Important, brightening, hat trick, threatened, the stop. major, measure, fragile, Fraser, legend, lesion, engine, answer, large, Asia, cake, kick, sink, sec. Game, game, kept, gap, lake, leg, <coughs> lean, rear, better, luggage, rugged, rugged, right, light, committed, pace, base, flip, flub, cap. Keb, lep, lab, pay, bay. Lies, lies, sip, zip, so, zo, maze, maze, Elisa, Elisa, multiple, Robert, example, pressure, principle, number. People, philosopher, volcanism, written, maximum, question, summer, reason, cousin, often, tip, dip, cart, card, tight, tide, train, drain, fed, fed. Team, dream. Thigh, thigh. Breathe, breathe. Teeth, teeth. Through, though. Worth, worthy. Okay. Okay, so let me talk to her.
Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Agnes, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. So, so far, I have listened to part A of your voice recording. I'm going to listen to part B in just a minute with you at the same time. Uh, I'm going to recommend some lessons here. So overall, you're pretty confident, you're comfortable, I think, with with reading a lot of these words. Now, I'm going to hear your, you speak in just a minute, but here are my recommendations right now. Lesson number 11, 14, 15. In lesson 15, focus on the glottal stop. For example, in the words, Batman, Bitten, Important, Brightening, Hat Rack, Threatened. That particular sound you can work on. Also, lesson 16, lesson 19. Now, lesson lesson um, 19 and 23 are similar. They're similar in this way. This is what you got to get used to with uh, English. Is when you have a voiceless consonant at the end of a word, the vowel which precedes it should be shorter. Now, when a voice consonant's at the end of a word, the vowel sound which precedes it should be longer. So then if you go to lesson 19 and you look at some of these words, now I'm not saying you don't know how to pronounce the P and the B, you do, but you're not making those vowel sounds different in their duration. For example, you say flap, flab, cap, cab, lap, lab. Now I say fl flap, flab, cap, cab, lap, lab. So when the B's at the end of the word, the vowel sound should be longer, and that helps us distinguish uh, the sounds, believe it or not. Now, the same thing applies for lesson 23. For example, cart, card, fat, fad. So again, you need to make the vowel sound a little bit longer when it precedes that voice consonant. So as you go through my lessons in the pronunciation area, you'll learn what voice and voiceless consonants are, and you'll get the list of which ones are which. If you go through my videos, it talks about the introduction of vowel and consonant sounds of American English. All right, so uh, I recommend Agnes actually go through all my pronunciation lessons, but you want to focus on the ones I outlined in this discussion thread. You want to focus on these a little bit more. So as you go through my lessons, read out loud with me. I recommend that. Follow with me. Read with me out loud as I teach you the information in those videos. Okay, now let's continue onward. So you're going to tell me a little bit about yourself here, I believe. Here we go. Question one. Okay. What is your education background and your work history? Okay, uh, originally I'm from Poland. Okay. I have a master's degree of mathematics, which allowed me to be a math teacher for a couple of years. All right. Uh, when I came to the United States, I didn't speak English um, at all. So uh, I had to start everything uh, from the beginning. Wow. Mm. That's incredible, but you speak English very fluently now. You're telling me when you first came here, you spoke nothing, no English at all? Amazing. Now the question is, well, how long did that take you? Five years, four years, ten years? Before I worked uh, in many different places to have a contact with a vivid language, like vivid English language. Um, and I would say I worked in many places which allowed me to have contact with uh, many languages or something. So maybe use which in there to make that connection a little more clear. At the same time, Mm, I was a student of um, an intensive ESL course mm -hmm. at the college. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got um, it. Finally, I dared to be a math teacher here, what was an extraordinary experience uh, for me. Okay. In the meantime, <coughs> I was a math tutor, so I, um, I could practice math language in English okay. as well. Um, I think that's it. 
Um, question two, why it is, is it important for you to improve your speaking and pronunciation abilities of American English? All right, I'm listening. Okay. First of all, I live in the United States and I can't imagine living here without a good English. Second, um, I'm a high educated person, so, well... I would say I am a highly, highly educated person, so use that adverb would, there. I would like to speak English like an educated person. Okay. Uh, and utilize richer vocabulary for it. Okay. Um, now, to help you with vocabulary, Agnes, if you need more college-level vocabulary, go to my vocabulary lesson number four, five, and six, all of which will help you to develop a good, solid vocabulary of about 1,500 words. Third, I'm a math teacher with an experience, so I'm able to share my... I would say I'm a math teacher with experience, not with an experience. If you say an experience, then you have to complete that idea. Just say, I'm a math teacher with experience. Knowledge with students here. And finally, of course, to get a teacher's license, um, I have to pass the TOEFL, um, I mean TOEFL speaking section, Okay. which is very, very difficult for me. What do you need to get? Okay, and question three... Now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop. Okay, so what, what exactly is the speaking score you need? I'm assuming it's probably 26 points or higher, am I right? hope to achieve in this course. Um, I hope to improve my English, uh, especially spoken English, and okay. receive a magic 26 points from there we go. Um, a TOEFL speaking exam. That's what I thought, okay. Which will open uh, the door of uh, further education. It's possible. Agnes, it is possible. You're already pretty comfortable speaking the language. You probably need to speak a little bit faster, but your accent's pretty good. You don't have a lot of problems with your delivery right now, at least when it comes to pronunciation. So I think that you're in very good shape. It is possible, even likely, that you can reach this goal. The question is, how long is it going to take? So I'm estimating between one and three months, I think. So you you already seem to be pretty comfortable with the language. Thank you. All right, you're welcome, and thank you for completing this uh, pretest. So if I look at the intelligibility scale, right, and I'm ranking you right now, you're pretty high already. I'm going to put you at 5.0 out of 7. Uh, which means that you have a barely detectable accent, you're pretty comfortable speaking English, and you have fairly extensive vocabulary. So you can click on the link that will help you learn more about your score. So you're in very good shape. So what do you do now? Start practicing these lessons. I would recommend, pay for you right now, I would say 40% of your time when you're doing speaking practice, you're focusing on your delivery or pronunciation. Then 60% of your time, you're focusing on speaking, which means you're speaking to, uh, you're recording speaking tasks. For me to score, you're also speaking every day. You're watching a lot of TV, you're listening to the radio, you're uh, listening to music. Really use the language a lot right now, Agnes. This is very important uh, because the more you use it, the more natural you will sound, and that is a fact, all right? So hang in there.
Yeah, hi there. These comments are for Joy, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT, and you completed our independent speaking practice test number 61. All right, so I'm going to take a look at what this speaking task is first, and then let's hear how you answered it. So what is your favorite type of food? Describe it and explain why you like to eat it so much. So the hard part here is the description. My favorite type of food is roasted fish. I like it so much because... My favorite type of food is roasted fish. I like it so much because it is proteinous in nature and also it is easy to prepare. Okay, but what is it exactly? First of all, proteinous foods helps in building up the body and also contains some essential vitamins the body requires. Second of all, preparation of roasted fish is easy. Once I get it from the grocery store, Preparation doesn't take me up to five minutes and my roasted fish is ready to be consumed. For these reasons, I like roasted fish. Okay. Now my problem is you really didn't describe it that much. I would describe the fish, the dish, how you would eat it and so on. Give maybe 15 seconds of description to show me you have good vocabulary to describe it. And then after that, then you can give maybe one reason why you enjoy eating it. And that I think you would have better uh, answered this question. So some weaknesses with topic development. I think on this one, maybe partly some problems with language use in that you weren't using very precise vocabulary on that one. So I think that's part of it. Uh, so I'm going to put you right now at about 2.6 out of 4, 20 points out of 30 on this particular practice test. Yeah, hi there. These comments are for uh, Mitsue, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. So you're doing uh, independent speaking practice test number three. Now, if you know anybody who's interested in using my online TOEFL course, you can send them uh, a quick email and, and just tell them to go to better to, or tell them to go to online tofocourse.com. All right, here's a question that you're answering right now. Upon your death, what valuable object or material possession would you consider giving to a friend or family member? Why would you want your friend or family member to inherit this object? The valuable object I would give to my family or friends are crochet stuffed animals I made. 
The first reason is there are only one in the world since I designed and handcrafted them. And also, these techniques are not popular, so there are not many people who can make these uh, processed stuffed animals. And you cannot find uh, these animals in stores, so okay. they are very special. Second reason is uh, everyone likes my stuffed animals. I often show my animals to my family and friends, and they said I have talent, so I think they should happy to keep them and remind me. So that's why I want to give my animal to my friend and family. Okay, so my suggestion here to really strengthen that topic development, be more specific, which friend, which family member, your sister, brother, your mom, dad, and uncle, who exactly would you want to give this stuffed animal to? And then explain why uh, you want you want to focus on that specific thing, right? So. Uh, that would be part of my advice, so maybe some weaknesses with your topic development on this, you want to make it a little more specific. Uh, you had pretty good use of your language, I think grammar and vocabulary didn't notice any major problems, and delivery, you're working on that, uh, you're making a lot of efforts with your intonation, I like that, and keep it up, keep up the good work. Uh, your score here, I'm going to put you to about 2.83 out of 4, 22 points out of 30, on this practice test. Okay, let's see. Got about two more here. I'm going to go eat lunch now, so I'm going to take a break at this point.